Hello everyone, this is episode number three of the background processing in functional scale series. In this one, as promised, we will talk about the supervisor abstraction from Cut Effect 3. Uh, and that's it, let's get to it. So before I show you what supervisor actually does, let's try to do something without it. And then I'm going to show you how it helps in that situation. Uh, so in the previous videos in the series, we talked about start, about fibers. Uh, let's create some sort of program uh, for our purpose here. Uh, we're going to do like a sleep uh, for one second, then print something um, done. The whole program is going to be program start. Uh, we're going to um, take this fiber here and we are going to join on it. Except with a twist, we are going to set a timeout on the whole thing. Uh, let's say 500 milliseconds. Uh, so obviously this should finish before this one second. And because I have a result I have an outcome here in this whole IO, I need to do void. Uh, and yeah, let's try to run this. So after half a second, uh, we got a timeout here. Uh, also, we, we we can see that the, the program here didn't complete. We, we don't see that done. Uh, we can also just make sure we can add an uh, on cancel here or on finalize. Uh, sorry, that's uh, guarantee. Uh, on finalize is the name for the method on the resource, uh, by the way. So we are going to use guarantee case and we are going to print uh, the outcome. Let's do some formatting and let's run this again. Uh, we should see the finalizer here. Uh, so uh, we should be seeing uh, that if we were doing the correct thing, but we are not. Uh, we're just joining on the fiber. And here we can clearly see how just joining and doing flat map joining uh, on a fiber doesn't allow us to react to cancellation in this fiber. Uh, if we had used uh, background discussed in the previous video uh, and used it with use, uh, this would be just just join whatever. Uh, we would be seeing that, right? So we can see cancel now here because the lifetime of the resource of the fiber uh, is uh, managed by this resource from background. Uh, but we don't use background. We are using start. Uh, so this is not going to work. We are not going to see the cancelled text from this call uh, if we if we just use start and flat map. Uh, so what we can do instead, uh, of course, as I mentioned, we can use background. Uh, we could use bracket here. Uh, I mentioned this in the previous video as well, uh, but we are not going to do that. We are going to use something different. And what we are going to use is supervisor. So I will wrap this whole thing here, the whole thing that is under this timeout or above it, but under like under the hood, uh, this will be guarded by the timeout function. Uh, we are going to create a supervisor. So we do it like this. And this also returns a resource. Again, I have a video about resource. You can learn more about what this is. Um, and let's call it sub. Uh, we're not using it yet. Uh, let's use it. So instead of start, I will do uh, sub supervise. And this also gives me a fiber, but it also attaches this fiber to the life cycle of the supervisor. So if I call this, uh, actually let's do the timeout inside. The timeout is inside the supervisor's lifetime. So if we do this timeout here, if we do everything like we are doing it right now, when this resource is being closed, all the fibers will be canceled. And there's just one here, uh, but let's see what this would look like. We can see that canceled was printed, so this run, which means that the program here, uh, it was able to react to cancellation. And this is because everything that we pass to supervise will automatically be canceled if we are closing the supervisor. If we had done the timeout here, it will still work the same way. Uh, we can actually run this. I will still see canceled here, uh, except now there's a slightly different way that we are getting there. Uh, thing is, if we had a guarantee case here, uh, let's see, exit case, uh, or like outcome, uh, we were print this, let's call it outcome. Uh, uh, so here we will see what the completion of the resource being used was. So if we cancel the resource, which is going to be the case in this case, we will see cancelled here. Uh, we'll see cancelled twice on the screen. So we'll have cancelled and then OC cancelled. So first we were cancelling the uh, fiber inside. And then the resource was also canceled, like this, this use call. However, if we move the timeout inside, uh, we will move it here. 
we will see that this will print cancelled as, as previously, but the resource used will exit with a failure, so this will be errored uh, because of the timeout here. So let's take a really quick look at Supervisor. Uh, it turns out that the implementation is quite straightforward. It's not the easiest thing in the world, of course, but it, well, it, it's really not a lot of code. This is exact the exact implementation. Uh, basically, there's a ref created with a map of all these fibers uh, or the their cancellation hooks, actually. Uh, so this will be fiber cancel. You can see that it gets inserted here. Uh, there are also some tokens, like unique tokens to uh, serve as keys of the map. This will guarantee that when we close the supervisor, there will not be any background fibers started accidentally still running. Uh, unless, of course, you still use start directly. In that case, uh, you are on your own. Uh, so using supervisor is in general going to be safer for you than just using start. Uh, supervisor is something like background uh, or using the parallel operators, both, brace, uh, all of these built-in operators. Uh, if they are there, if they are able to give you what you need, you should probably use them instead of going with start or background. However, there are some rules that you still need to keep in mind when working with supervisor. Uh, first of all, uh, you should probably not be passing supervisor implicitly. It's not a type class, it's not a capability trait. Uh, you can actually have multiple supervisors in a single application at a given time. Uh, for example, you might have one for uh, your database code, you could have one for your business logic. Uh, you can group and structure these uh, in different ways depending on where you are, but uh, you get the idea. It is possible to have more than one. So it's probably not a good idea to pass it implicitly. You also have to remember that the fiber started by supervisor, if you close it, they will be canceled. You will not wait for them. Uh, although this is up for discussion and there's an open ticket about that in Cast Effect 3, uh, it might change in the future. Uh, maybe it will be made more configurable so that when you, when you are creating a supervisor, you'll be able to, uh, to say what's supposed to happen when it's being shut down. Another important thing to remember is that if you start multiple uh, fibers using supervise, it doesn't matter what order you start them, they, the, the cancellation in case of supervisor being shut down will be concurrent. You will just have all the finalizers run in a, in a concurrent fashion. So there, is, there are no ordering guarantees here. This might also change in the future if there's a need for that. Uh, future versions of Cast Effect 3 might allow this. Uh, if you're interested, you can make an issue, you can look at the existing ones. Uh, so I guess that's it. Uh, supervisor is not really a very big complex abstraction. It's actually a relatively small one. It doesn't require a lot of power either. It only needs concurrent, which is now no longer one of the most powerful deckers in Cat's Effect. It's actually one of the weakest ones. Uh, it's nowhere near as strong as async, for example. Uh, so that's it. Uh, this is how you use Supervisor, uh, what it can help you with. I hope you enjoyed this. So subscribe, leave a like if you like this, and I'll see you in the next episode.